Brokadane. In a long-running series like Final Fantasy, you're bound to find some broken characters. Broken in the bad sense, but in the good sense as well. Today, we're going to examine this beloved series and find our top 10 most broken Final Fantasy party members. Now, I'm considering all games with the Final Fantasy title, not only the core titles. I'm also looking for character-specific broken traits. So if the party member is too dependent on the junction system, materia setup, or job assignment, they aren't going to count. Also, also, no jobs, only named characters. That will be a list for another day. Finally, we'll be considering each character in their respective game, so no true comparisons here. Before we start, if you like RPG content, then please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. All right, let's get started. Number 10. Final Fantasy Type-0 isn't a game that comes to mind for most Final Fantasy fans. Its niche place in the community has left it relatively obscure. In Type-0, you choose from a class of mercenary students. You control one with two others as AI partners. Now, there is a few ways to break this game, but no character is more exploitable than Deuce. First of all, Deuce's physical attack is 360 degrees, and its area of attack grows as you play your flute. This allows you to often softlock entire mobs of enemies. Second is her invincibility build. Given her avoid ability and the right setup, she is nearly untouchable. Finally is her support. She can both heal herself and her party, as well as send the AI party members into a stat-enhanced berserk mode. All in all, Deuce holds her place as the most broken FF Type-0 party member. Number 9 Final Fantasy XIII has a progression problem that pretty much makes it impossible to break party members until they leave Cocoon in the late game. Once there though, there are a few standouts, but no one hits quite like Vanille. First of all, Vanille's poison ability and summon are incredible, and with the right strategy, you absolutely wrecks the enemy. But the main reason she's broken is her death spell. Vanille is the only saboteur who gains the ability to instantly kill enemies, and this has been used to farm Final Fantasy XIII's biggest baddie, the Adamantois. The strategy begins with her bringing out her summon to incapacitate the Adamantois, then using a team of saboteurs, spam debuffs and the death spell until your roughly 8% chance hits. Sure, it's somewhat of a gamble, but one that can work pretty regularly if done right, and can easily level max your party in the latter half. Number 8 Final Fantasy Rebirth is the most recent title in the series, and it's been fun to watch different game-breaking strategies come out of its deceptively deep combat system. Almost every character in this title is useful, but one has consistently broken the endgame of both Remake and Rebirth. And that character is Aerith. Aerith is your main magic DPS, and while magic is entirely busted in this title, that isn't why she's on this list. The main ability that tips Aerith towards the broken category is her ATB and magic ward spells. Both of these abilities cast a ward on the ground, and if a party member stands in it, they will receive a unique buff. Magic Ward allows you to cast a spell twice. MP Conservation, especially in the hard mode arena battles, is key. So being able to cast a spell twice, let's say Quikaga, not only melts bosses but conserves your MP as well. Aerith's ATB Ward coupled with Yuffie's Brumo form is a game-breaking combination that not only makes you invincible but gives you infinite ATB as well. Number 7 if we were talking about broken Final Fantasy classes, then I would have a lot to say about Final Fantasy Tactics. But not considering classes, Thunder God Sid still lands on the upper end of this list. Not only is his character specific class a mixture of Dark and Holy Knight, but he comes with the single best weapon in the entirety of Final Fantasy Tactics. Excalibur grants auto haste to whomever has it equipped. This alone is enough to bust the game right open. Throw on the fact that sword skills are exclusive to certain party members and unobtainable through the job system. These skills are absolutely busted and Thunder God Sid has access to all of them. Number 6 Waka might not seem like much next to characters like Yuna, whose summons are broken in and of themselves, or Riku, who we'll be discussing shortly. But the lovable Blitzball player holds an incredible secret. If you abuse different exploits in Blitzball and unlock his limit and final weapon, Waka, using attack reel, can do the most damage in Final Fantasy X, and it's miles away from anyone else. You see, every time attack reels comes up, it's positioned the same way. So with a little bit of practice, you can get double attack each time. Couple this with his loner overdrive ability, and you can spam this devastating attack constantly. 
Sure, it's not as flashy as other party members, but overall, Waka's enemy-breaking attack sets him in the upper part of this list. Number 5. Kate, Sith, and Vanilla are known for having instant death strategies that one can abuse, but neither of them come close to the absolutely absurd exploit of Selfies the End. There are a dozen ways to manipulate this attack into appearing, and it insta-kills every boss aside from the undead. Now, one of the most reliable strategies for spamming this attack was on the original PlayStation, which, if you open the lid of the console, the game will glitch and enemies will not attack, but the ability to scroll through Selfie's limit abilities will be intact, ensuring that the end hits every time without the enemy attacking you. In order to regularly get the end to appear, don't just have Selfie at low health, but give her a minimal status ailment, which will increase its chances of appearing. Number 4. Taking in a game's context is important to identifying its limitations, then deciding which character helps break those limitations. In Final Fantasy IX, there is a 9,999 damage cap, which is reached by endgame via two methods. One is leveling an equipment, or two, abilities. Quina not only has the lowest MP costing 9,999 damaging ability in Frog Drop, but obtaining her blue magic by devouring enemies gains you the best abilities in Final Fantasy IX as well. In the mid game, if you eat a zombie well, you'll gain level 5 death. Go back to Gizmlock Grotto and easily one shot Grand Dragons, the second hardest random battle in the game, until Freya, another awesome character, has killed 100 dragons and can now damage for 9999 with Dragon's Crest. Besides that, if you know which enemies to use it on, level 5 death stays relevant. On top of that, you have Mighty Guard, which in the late game casts Shell and Protect. Its animation is long, which gives your party a chance to heal if you have auto regain. Bad Breath, which despite its low accuracy, is absolutely devastating when it hits. There's also Angel Snack, which is a party-wide remedy. Magic Hammer can be used to deplete Osmos' MP. This causes AI to wig out and can completely shatter the most difficult boss. Auto Life makes your party unkillable. And Night might be her single best ability. It casts sleep on everyone with perfect accuracy. If your party has insomnia, then you can easily sleep block enemies and bosses who are immune. And finally, abusing Limit Glove early on with Auto Life allows Quina to one-shot every early game boss all the way to disc 2. Don't sleep on Quina. Number 3. In the history of Final Fantasy, one class that has always been immensely exploitable is the Chemist. Riku from Final Fantasy X has an over limit called Mix, where you can combine different items to produce a whole host of effects. This ability is broken from the moment you get her, and stays that way all the way to the end game if you know what you're doing. She has dozens of awesome Mix abilities like Ultra Null All, which makes you invulnerable to elemental damage while granting every single stat boost on your entire party. Chaos Grenade, which hits hard while casting Slow, Poison, Darkness, Silence, Full Break, and Sleep on the enemy. Hyper Mighty G, which casts Shell, Protect, Haste, Regain, and Auto Life on all your party members. Hot Spurs and Eccentric, which boosts everyone's overdrive charge. Couple this with endgame weapons allows you to spam damage focused overdrives like Waka's Tack Reels or Titus's Blitz Ace. Sunburst is probably her best attacking mix, but you'll mainly be focusing on support. In the end, her mix ability is incredible and has been used to abuse this title from beginning to end. Number 2 Final Fantasy XV is a busted game, and not always in a good sense. Of the broken Final Fantasy titles, I'd say that it falls in third place right behind Final Fantasy 2 and Final Fantasy 8. Now, I could talk about the main character Noctis, who is absolutely busted if you abuse Warp Strike, but I'm actually going to talk about Prompto. It's obvious that the devs never originally planned on giving you control of a long range character who utilizes a machine gun and rocket launcher from the beginning. This is an absolutely insane exploit that lets you blow up mobs instantly racking up early game experience. But the bazooka isn't the only way Prompto is broken, because a long range character was never considered during development. Many of the hardest boss battles can be cheesed by having Prompto stand out of attack range and slowly pick away at their health with his guns. Overall, Prompto might be the single greatest broken character in any action based Final Fantasy. Number 1 
The most broken Final Fantasy character is not an easy title to give out, but if it has to go to someone, it might as well go to Zell Dinch. Like I mentioned at the top, Final Fantasy VIII is already incredibly broken with its stat manipulation, enemy level mechanic, junction system, and limit break spamming. Zell's duel at high crisis gives you 10 seconds to do as many input commands as possible to rack up damage. The strategy that makes this guy so broken is called Armageddon Fist. Three moves consistently show up during his limit break that have two simple inputs. With a little bit of practice, the player can spam Punch Rush and Booyah. If done optimally, this results in about 700,000 damage, which will one-shot every boss in the game minus Omega Weapon. If you can manage to get lucky with your crits, then even Omega Weapon will go down in a dinch. I mean cinch. <laughs> And that's our list. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments which broken Final Fantasy character I missed. Also, which Final Fantasy classes do you think are the most broken? Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later.